Unit 8, Video Lecture 5, Limiting Reactants. Well, we've got two vocabulary terms that we have to talk about here. The first is a limiting reactant. And this is going to be a reactant, so it's going to be something that's found on the left side of the equation, that limits the amount of product. What this generally means is that the reaction will stop whenever the limiting reactant is used up. Our excess reactant is the reactant that's left over or is in excess. That means that there's too much. Let's take a look at an example. If we have eight car bodies and 48 tires, and we know that in order to make a car, we need one car body plus four tires, that will then give us one car. So the question comes in is with eight car bodies, how many cars can we make? We can do a simple stoic problem where we do eight car bodies and we need one car body to produce one car. Therefore, with eight car bodies, we could, cr we could make eight cars. But now if we have 48 tires, how many cars would we be able to equip if we had 48 tires? We know that we start with our 48 tires, and then one car requires four tires. So 48 times one divided by four, we would have enough to equip 12 cars. So if we look at our two products, eight cars or 12 cars, well, we're gonna, we're gonna run out of car bodies before we run out of tires. So this means that we'll only be able to make eight cars and then we're going to have some tires left over. Another way to think about this is in making a sandwich. If we started with 32 slices of bread and 15 slices of cheese, well, how many cheese sandwiches could we make? Again, we start with the same thing. 32 slices of bread, we know from our balanced equation that we need two slices of bread to make one sandwich. So in this case, with just the bread, we'd have enough bread to make 16 sandwiches. If we had 15 slices, of 15 slices of cheese, again, from our balance equation, we see that each sandwich gets one slice of cheese. Well, 15 slices of cheese would allow us to make 15 sandwiches. As you can see here, 15 sandwiches is a maximum that we can make. Once we make 15 sandwiches, we're out of cheese. This makes cheese the limiting reactant. So let's take a look at an actual problem. 15 grams of aluminum sulfide and 10 grams of water react until the limiting reagent, this is just another name for reactant, so don't get confused by that, until the limiting reagent is used up. Let's look at part A first. Which is the limiting reagent? So we're going to take our 15.00 grams of Al2S3, and we're going to stoic to a product. When you pick a product, just pick one. It doesn't matter. Just use the same product both times. 15.00 grams of Al2S3, and we will work to H2S. I have mass of Al2S3. I'm going to convert to moles of Al2S3. That, I'll use my molar mass, which I'm going to have to calculate from the periodic table. So 2 times 26.98 plus 3 times 32.07. This gives me a total mass of 150.17 grams of Al2S3 in one mole of Al2S3. So now I'm at moles, and I'm going to use my mole ratio. The coefficient in front of Al2S3 is 1, so 1 mole of Al2S3. The coefficient in front of H2S is a 3, so 3 moles of Al2S3. Sorry, this should be H2S, because that's the mole ratio, a h 2 s 3 moles of H2S to 1 mole of Al2S3. So now I'll use the molar mass of H2S. H is 1.01, so I have 2 times 1.01 .01 plus 
plus S is 32.07. This gives me 34.09 grams of H2S over one mole of H2S. So now I can plug this into my calculator. 15 times 1 divided by 150.17 times 3 divided by 1 times 34.09 divided by 1 and I can see that with 15 grams of Al2S3 I would be capable of making 10.22 grams of H2S. I then need to come back and do a second mass to mass stoic problem this time using my second reactant which is H2O. So I'll follow the same thing. I'll convert from I'll convert mass of water to moles of water. And one mole of water is 18.02 grams of water. I'll use my mole ratio, and this time I see that I have six moles of water and still three moles of H2S. And my molar mass of H2S is still the same, 34.09 grams of H2S in one mole of H2S. So doing the math, I take 10 divided by 18.02 times 3 divided by 6 times 34.09. And here, I get 9.459 grams of H2S. So the question we're trying to ask is, which is the limiting reagent? Since we produced less H2S, here, that means that 10 grams of water is my limiting reactant. I'm going to run out of water before I run out of aluminum sulfide. Part B asked for the amount of H2S that could be made. So this is the amount that's made because of the limiting reactant. Let's look at another one. So we'll just say determining the limiting reactant and how much product. Take 1.20 grams of aluminum, and I'll convert to moles of aluminum. So one mole of aluminum over 26.98 grams of aluminum. And then I'll use my mole ratio, and I see that I have two moles of aluminum and two moles of AlI3. And then my last step is the molar mass of AlI3, so one mole of AlI3. Now, like we said, aluminum is 26.98 plus 3 times iodine, which is 126.9, meaning that my molar mass is 407.68 grams of AlI3. So with 1.2 grams of aluminum divided by 26.98, times 2 divided by 2, times 407.68, I would expect to make about 408 grams of Ali3. My second product, or my second reactant, is 2.40 grams of iodine. Now, one mole of iodine is 126.9 times 2, because iodine is diatomic, and we get 253.8 grams of I2. I use my mole ratio and see that I have 3 moles of I2 and 2 moles of AlI3. And then I'll use the same molar mass, 407.68 grams of AlI3 in 1 mole of AlI3. And now I can do my math. So 2.4 divided by 253.8 times 2 divided by 3 times 407.68, I see that with 2.4 grams of iodine, I can only make 2.57 grams of Ali3. So since this number is smaller, this is the maximum amount. Let's try spelling correctly. Maximum maximum amount of product, which means that 2.40 grams of iodine is my limiting reactant.
So pause the video lecture and practice the following on your own. If you got these two problems right, you can stop watching the video lecture and start and complete your reflection and start practicing. If you need to, stay tuned and we'll work through that problem. All right, consider the following reaction. Assuming we start with 100 grams of calcium carbonate and 45 grams of iron 3 phosphate, which reactant is a limiting reactant? So we start with our 100 grams of calcium carbonate. We'll convert that to moles. Calcium is 40.08 plus carbon plus 3 oxygen means that we have 100.09 grams of CaCO3 in one mole. I'll use my mole ratio, 3 moles of CaCO3. And here we can just pick either one of our two products. So let's work with Fe2CO33. So one mole of Fe2CO33. And then the molar mass. So iron is 55.85 times 2 plus 3 carbons plus 9 oxygens. So I have 291.73 grams of iron 3 carbonate. In one mole of Fe2CO33. So 100 divided by 100.09 times 1 divided by 3 times 291.73 with 100 grams, I can make 97.2 grams and now I'll take my second reactant, my 45 grams of iron 3 phosphate one mole of iron 3 phosphate iron is 55.85 plus P which is 30.97 plus 4 times oxygen is 150.82 grams using my mole ratio I see that I have two moles of FEPO4 and still one mole of Fe2CO33 and then I'll use my molar mass 291.73 grams in one mole of Fe2CO33 and I get 45 divided by 150.82 times 1 divided by 2 times 291.73 and with 45 grams I can only make 43.5 grams of Fe2 CO33 so that number since it's less is the maximum amount of product I can make making 45 grams of Fe3PO4 my limiting reactant.